It's happened. A lot has happened uh, over eight years. Uh, That's the last time I spoke to you was eight years ago. And we've seen vigorous debates, a lot of debates, on nearly every conceivable issue. Matters that affected the prosperity and, and peace. Our views are grounded in timeless truths. During these debates, we stuck to timeless truths. We believe that the most reliable guide for our country is the collective wisdom of ordinary citizens. We believe our culture benefits from a diversity of faith, a respect for values, and the guidance of a higher power. We believe in personal responsibility. We believe in the universality of freedom. We believe our nation has the right to defend itself even if uh, sometimes others disagree. And we believe America remains a force of good in our world. There's another philosophy, and it's advanced by decent people who see the world differently. They tend to think Washington has the answers to our problems. They tend to believe our country only succeeds under the expansive federal government. They tend to be suspicious of America's exercise of global leadership. Unless, of course, we get permission slips from international organizations. (laughs) Over the past seven years, we have engaged this opposition with a clear and consistent philosophy. We didn't take polls to decide what to say. We didn't seek the advice of editorial pages to decide what to think. And we darn sure didn't seek the approval of groups like Code Pink and MoveOn.org before deciding what to do. We've also applied our philosophy to issues of national security. Six and a half years ago, our country faced the worst attack in our history. I understood immediately that we would have to act boldly to protect the American people. So we've gone on the offense against these extremists. We're staying on the offense, and we will not relent until we bring them to justice. We recognized that this is a war, not just a matter of law enforcement. We recognize that we're engaged in the decisive ideological struggle of our time. The first battle in this war against the extremists centered on Afghanistan. And 9-11 attackers had trained and planned in Afghanistan. We believed our military could remove the Taliban from power and that we could help them aid the rise of a stable and democratic government. Critics had a different view. One commentator said most Afghans would oppose an American invasion and fight the foreign occupiers. Another declared, we're not headed toward a quagmire. We are already in one. Another commentator scoffed, Afghanistan is a democracy. Forget it. Well, we stood our ground and we've seen results. Al-Qaeda lost its terrorist camps in Afghanistan, and the Taliban was driven from power. The Afghan people braved threats of violence to elect a new president and a new parliament. Roads and hospitals are being built. Girls who were once forbidden from going to school are now going to school. America 
25 NATO allies and 15 partner nations are helping the Afghan people secure their country. The Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and their allies are on the run. Afghanistan has a long road ahead, and they have a future that offers promise and hope. We're going to stand with the Afghan people. We're going to help millions claim their liberty, and we will always work to make sure Afghanistan will never be again be a safe haven for terrorists and extremists who want to do us harm. The war against our enemies brought us to Iraq. Our coalition confronted a regime that defied United Nations Security Council resolutions, violated a ceasefire agreement, attacked its neighbors, sponsored terrorism, and had a history of using and pursuing weapons of mass destruction. Saddam Hussein was a threat to the United States and a threat to the world. My decision to remove Saddam Hussein was the right decision at the time, and it is the right decision today. Because we acted, 25 million Iraqis are free. We've seen them go to the polls. We've seen them elect a representative government. We've also seen an enemy determined to roll back this progress through horrific acts of violence designed to pit Iraqis one against another. One year ago, things were not going well in that country. <coughs> Terrorists and extremists were succeeding in their efforts to plunge Iraq into, into chaos. You see, they wanted to deny Iraqis their liberty. They can't stand freedom. They wanted to establish safe havens in Iraq from which to launch attacks against America and its allies. I strongly believed that America's security and peace in the world depend upon defeating this enemy. So, so we reviewed our strategy. If things weren't working, I needed to know why and what it would take to make things better. And that's why you review a strategy. I made up my mind. I listened carefully to a lot of folks. And I decided to send more troops into Iraq in a dramatic policy shift. policy shift has been com become known as the surge. Our critics had a different view. They looked at rising violence in Iraq and declared the war was lost. So some concluded the surge had failed even before it had fully begun. Two foreign affairs experts proposed, quote, a well-managed defeat to boost U.S. credibility. We stood our ground, yes. and we're seeing results. <laughs> year after our order, the surge of forces, high-profile terrorist attacks in Iraq are down. Civilian deaths are down. Sectarian killings are down. U.S. and Iraqi forces have captured or killed thousands of extremists in Iraq, including hundreds of key al-Qaeda leaders and operatives. There is more work to be done. It takes a while for young democracies to take root, but reconciliation is taking place. I recognize the progress in Iraq is fragile, and there's going to be tough days ahead. Yet even the enemy recognizes the progress we're being making. They recognize they're on the wrong side of events. They are disheartened, they are demoralized, and they will be defeated. Yeah. 